Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa panel discussion on a very eventful day where we have had an initial public offer for I&M Bank Rwanda. Now this is no ordinary bank, arguably the oldest bank in the region. 1963 is the year when this bank was incorporated here in Rwanda. Now, uh, on my panel to uh, help me deliberate the discussions is uh, the Managing Director for I&M Bank. That's, of course, Mr. Robin uh, Benslow. Uh, we also do have uh, Celestine Rabukumba, who is the CEO of the Rwanda Stock Exchange, and Mr. Robert Matthew, who is the Executive Director at the Capital Markets Authority, Rwanda. Gentlemen, pleasure to have you here. I'm sure you're very uh, exhausted from all the deliberations and the happenings leading up to this uh, eventful day. Uh, but uh, let me start with uh, Mr. Robert Matthew. Uh, Th this, this is uh, something that uh, has been in the pipeline for quite a while. Uh, just uh, walk me through uh, some of the, 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 the processes that have led us to uh, this day as it is. Um, to begin with, of course, the decision to, um, to go public uh, for the bank um, was made as soon as the key shareholders agreed, about 15 months ago. Yeah. yeah. However, um, then we went through the procurement process as a government, getting the transaction advisors on board. And uh, eventually they worked together very closely with the management of the bank. And they were able to produce um, a draft uh, disclosure document, which came to us last week on Thursday. And by Saturday, by at 9.30 in the evening, we had given an approval. Uh, I want to uh, bring Celestine into uh, the picture here. Uh, for the longest time, Celestine, we have seen a lot of institutional dominance when it comes to uh, the stock exchange here in Rwanda. Who is to say that uh, this time around, after this uh, IPO, we won't see a lot of uh, dominance from institutional traders and the appetite on uh, the Rwanda stock exchange? Well, you know, that, that's the nature of markets. Institutionals are always the ones who dominate. You know, there's no two ways around it. So they have the most money and uh, they do the analysis. They are the ones who get involved, especially when you are starting a market like this. Uh, and uh, the retail investors also come uh, in more numbers, but uh, in small, smaller denominations. So, but you expect still to see more institutional investors uh, dominating the market because they are the ones who have the bigger pockets. Right. Uh, of course, Robin, the number in everyone's uh, tongue right now is uh, 90 francs per share. Uh, just walk us through how we arrived at uh, the, this uh, magic number. Okay, without getting into the, the technical details, I think there's a, to, it's a, a reflection on the past performance, um, the, the prospect, uh, the, our prospect in the future. Um, we have uh, our projections reflect that will continue growing. We, our CAGA over the last uh, over the last five years has been um, almost just uh, just south of twenty uh, percent. Um, we're looking to grow at that rate in the future, so we'll double our book uh, within the next five years. Um, the state of the the Rwandan financial sector, which is extremely stable, I think we've we haven't suffered the contagion of the the rest of East uh, of East Africa. Um, the banks are well capitalised. Um, and all of that form part of the uh, of the the stock exchange. As a matter of fact, uh, the stock exchange of the the valuation. I think what was uh, what was interesting that we had one of the one of the brokers in the market provide us with their interpretation of where our valuation should be. And without that the, the, that being shared, um, the eventual valuation came out almost spot on in terms of where they believed we we should be, which is a testament that we we priced right. Obviously. There's, uh, one has to look at uh, obtaining the best value for the government as they, as they exit the organization. And at the same time, we need to make sure that the, the, the share hits the market at the right level and there's, uh, it creates the right, correct levels of appetite. Right. Uh, Robert, timing is everything. And uh, you made this very clear at your presentation earlier on today. Uh, let's talk about the numbers. We have seen uh, uh, the market cap, global market cap, grow up only, uh, go up only 4%. Uh, this is uh, as per 2016, 36% uh, for uh, a drop rather when it comes to uh, newly listed companies. Uh, this is globally. Is this the time for us to actually be seeing new listings? And we, shouldn't we holding, be holding into uh, much of our capital and, uh, and our revenues? Well, I think to the contrary for me, um, the, the drop in commodity prices, which drives our economies, has reached, uh, is now flat. 
with uh, with um, signs of of recovery but there are some specific areas i mean look at oil oil has already recovered in price 55 uh, exactly a barrel. i mean yeah. from 30 if you look at the uh, price of uh, gold um, and then um, which other commodities i mean gold even, is at a 3 month high now yes yeah and uh, although the case for gold may be slightly different, but we have other minerals that uh, Africa exports. I mean, look at uh, what we have even here, I mean, tin, in this region. Tin uh, prices up? Yes, 10% uh, already recovery. So uh, with those signs, the timing is now. Again, if you wait, you may never catch the wave. So this is, to me, this is uh, the right timing. And also remember that uh, uh, the other thing also happening is that because of the performance last year, uh, I believe that uh, asset managers and uh, international portfolio investors must be hunting for opportunities uh, from the recovery. And as the minister said, those who come early, they make more. <laughs> uh, Celestine and uh, Robin, I want to uh, pick your brain on this particular one. Uh, we have seen I&M invest particularly in uh, government securities. Uh, we were talking earlier and we are seeing $33 billion in 2016 put particularly on uh, bonds as opposed to treasury bills. I don't know where this leaves you, Celestine, as uh, the CEO of uh, the Rwanda Stock Exchange. Well, I think, um, you know, when they say bonds, you know, they, they, it also increased, it, it includes all debt instruments, I think that's what they are saying. They, they talked about uh, government paper, and I'm sure the bank is among the people who invest in the government, government paper from all maturities. Most likely they are involved in the trade bills and they are also involved in the longer term maturity bonds. So as a bank, because in, on the balance sheet of a bank, you need to invest in, near, in cash or near cash as per regulations or prudential regulations of the central bank. So uh, for us actually, they, they, they are a good customer because they are participating in those government pep, uh, the, the government paper, which means more activity on the stock exchange in the debt market or income uh, market segment. So for me, I think it's a, it's a welcome idea. Robert, what do you say? No, it's a, it was a strategic decision that the, that the bank took uh, to take advantage of yields. Um, we also wanted to uh, commence uh, trading. Um, this is a, a young market um, and we wanted to try and stimulate the, the market to an extent. Um, so we've seen some, um, some trades, albeit small, um, and start uh, proprietary trading on the, on the bond side, um, looking for investments. Uh, for uh, uh, for wealth management for wealth management clients as well, um, and it's a uh, it's an ongoing um, strategy, and we are well 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 covered. We hold a significant amount of liquidity within the market, um, and that gives us the opportunity to to invest in uh, in um, in government paper. Right. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, 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 piece here from uh, the prospectus. Let me read it word by word. The offer shares have not been and will not be registered under the Securities Act or with the regulatory authority of any state or jurisdiction in the United States. Now, uh, uh, Robert, I see you nodding already. What does this mean for the appetite uh, over and above in the United States of America? Well, uh, what happens is that um, in the U.S., the U.S. Is a, is, is a highly regulated market. Um, any investors, first of all, to sell products in the U.S., they have to be approved by the SEC. This is not our case. So to be on the safe side, if Americans are going to invest in the, in, in the product, they'll have to find ways of participating, okay, without um, uh, facing regulatory challenges. And the reason being that um, highly regulated because some of them are pension funds and so forth who have internal rules within their investment policy, restricting them on uh, where to invest in which ju jurisdictions. And they do put a requirement within the SEC rules that uh, if you leave it open, you cannot go to the US, for example, and uh, offer an IPO like this one and sell it openly because it requires to be proved by the SEC. Now, given the size of, um, of uh, transactions in our markets, it's, it's not worth going out there to try and get SEC approval for, uh, for uh, the, the investors in the US to come in. So they normally use funds. They buy many of them, especially institu institutional investors. They would come in through other funds that actually specialize in investing in, the, in this part of the world. 
Right, uh, Celestine, activity on the, the Rwanda uh, stock exchange. Uh, we have seen something very interesting here coming out of uh, the INM IPO, where 40% uh, will be, uh, well, outside Rwanda, then 60% uh, uptake is dedicated to uh, the, the ordinary Rwanda and East Africa. Uh, aren't we about to see more robust economies, maybe uh, from the Nairobi Securities Exchange or Nairobi Pension Funds, take up the action, have more activity here if we are allocating them 60% of the action? Uh, definitely. I mean, if you look at the dynamics in the market, you know, uh, people are looking for bargainers, you know, and I think this is one of them. So, I mean, we've not had any IPO in Nairobi for the past uh, two years, I think. So I'm sure the f pension funds, even retail investors, depending on how good the roadshows are going to be and the buzz around the IPO, definitely they are going to be coming in, in uh, according to what I'm I'm, I'm feeling uh, for that fact alone. So you look at the markets in Nairobi today, uh, in the banking sector, especially with the capping and all of that, if I was a fund manager in Nairobi, I'll be looking for investing in a company in a banking sector of uh, the, 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 the caliber of i &M Bank. So I, my answer is yes. Right. Uh, Robin, uh, i &M is looking good, of course, uh, with you at the helm. Uh, we're looking at... Uh, Profit before tax uh, versus a return in, on equity of uh, over 20%. The Honorable Minister made it very clear that this is a time to actually jump into onto this IPO. But uh, let's talk about the non-performing loans. I know we, we as journalists talk about non-performing loans for, for forever. But uh, we have seen this uh, increase from 3.2% uh, in uh, June 2013 up to 6.1% June 2016. Uh, tell me, what is being done to address this issue? If at all they are actually toxic. No, there's, uh, well, we're pleased to, to, uh, to advise that at the end of the year we closed with a, an NPL uh, ratio of 2.7. Um, so brought down significantly, mainly based on, uh, on a, um, a good um, focus on recoveries. Uh, we have a good team in place. Um, we have managed to work ourselves out of uh, one or two positions. Um, 2013. A, we took a, a, um, a couple of uh, two particularly bad hits in, the, in our corporate book and we've, we've been, able, been able to recover and put ourselves back on the two point, uh, at the level of 2.7. The bank came off for an extreme high seven or eight years ago uh, where we had to take a fundamental view in terms of products and offer and we'd had a good run up until 2015. Uh, unfortunately, two, uh, two accounts uh, took us by surprise. Um, it's just made us more vigilant in terms of our approach to uh, approach to risk, um, approach to uh, approach to credit risk, um, and we have uh, great guidance from a, from our, our board credit committee. Um, and we think, uh, given the focus of where we are, especially sp expansion into the retail sector, where we've seen uh, growth in mortgage lending of uh, north of 30 percent. Uh, and we see that diversification away from a reliance on the corporate book um, standing us in good stead for the future. Gentlemen, there's, uh, there's an issue that uh, is very, uh, well, at the clause of 2016 was on, on everyone's tongue, and that is uh, the depreciation of the Rand and Frank. Now, between uh, January and uh, October 2016, we did see it depreciate by close to 9%. Uh, on the contrary, though, many have argued that uh, it has exposed Rwanda to the outside market, and men, especially investors, to actually invest in a relatively m cheaper uh, investment assets uh, in the country. Now, what does this mean for an IPO like uh, I and M? Maybe, Robert, I could start with you. Well, um, I still feel that uh, I mean, what matters at the end of the day are the fundamentals of the country, and uh, they see an opportunity because the kind of returns that are reflected um, from in our, on our assets here are comparatively much higher than um, if you look at the, the original currencies. Domestic currency returns are good, but then, which means that we need to uh, be able to have these investors, and I'm sure many of them are aware, if they are able to hedge, hedge their positions, they will be able to uh, participate in the market. I can give you a simple example. You may not be aware, but a number of our stocks are actually being traded in bigger markets like um, Johannesburg and London and even uh, New York in terms of, uh, of um, uh, they are called depository notes, okay? Meaning that banks are able to structure products out there 
that enjoy the returns that we enjoy here without exposure to, to foreign exchange. Right. Uh, Celeste, if you could maybe have a take on the same. Well, I don't think I can add much uh, more. Uh, you, you, you look at the fundamentals. People are always looking at fundamentals. The country's fundamentals are good. The financial sector in Rwanda is good. It's growing. And, uh, and the diversification is very important. So uh, if you look at the entire planet today, everyone has lost against the dollar. The dollar has been strengthening, except uh, in the recent few, a few weeks, maybe it's, it's uh, trying to retrieve and the Americans have uh, some policies of uh, you know, uh, lowering the, the, bringing it down again. But uh, overall, it has been uh, gaining ground uh, in, in most markets. But at the end of the day, investors look for uh, fundamentals especially those long-term oriented kind of investors. So, uh, like Robert mentioned, uh, m most of our, our companies are traded in peanuts uh, as far as um, yeah, America or South Africa. So, uh, that means they are, again, the, the, despite the issues of uh, currencies, fundamentals are important, but also those, uh, those other opportunities in terms of uh, uh, not getting directly involved, uh, exposed to the dollar, they can, you know, to the Rwanda franc, they, they, they are still enjoying that benefit. But again, it's all based on the fundamentals, and the fundamentals are right. And of course, the investor confidence. Uh, I want to bring you in here, Robert, uh, on the issue of uh, the employees. Now, there's, uh, going through your prospectus again, uh, something very interesting struck me that uh, plus to a 0.5% uh, is actually being allotted to uh, the current employees of uh, I&M Bank. Uh, could you just uh, walk me through how this is going to be dispersed and the allotment? Okay, so there's, there's two, two issues at play here. One is, uh, as part of the offer for sale, you have uh, government is actually um, said that they will allocate shares to the staff of the bank, which we, they will then give in a priority in terms of the, the allotment. Um, and that's for uh, staff members to take advantage um, of, the, of the, the offer for sale. Over and above that, we've made a, uh, an ESOP scheme available um, to, for the staff, and that's to create a, uh, an opportunity for investing in the, in the company at the same time. So the additional five million shares will be uh, uh, will be listed uh, pr primarily for the the ESOP scheme. This is the first first scheme. Um, it's the it's the first time that we have an offer to staff um, going out, um, and we're trying to make it uh, available to all staff from the from the most junior uh, to in the uh, to the most senior, and that's where you'd like to see if we're going to be uh, if we're going to be listed. You want to see the the, the staff of the organisation uh, take up a take up a share in the in the company, and then we all become stakeholders in the in the overall achievement of the of the result. Right, uh, Robert. Uh, this might be going out of my way to ask this question, but uh, the government made it very clear that uh, they are actually on a plan to divest from uh, strategic investments, quote unquote. Uh, we have seen Indem Bank close to 19.1% of the shares divesting out of it. Uh, tell me, are there any uh, proposals on the table, on your, crossing your table right now on the same maybe? Um, yeah, prospects are there. We have a number of companies. But as I told you as a regulator, um, I, I wouldn't be able to say it's this company until I have received an application from a company or until a statement is done by the issuer themselves or the government. So, yes, there is a plan, uh, and very robust, and uh, actually um, government is very keen to make sure that this, most of these companies get out there and they operate purely on, on, on market and private basis, well governed, because the responsibility of governing now will leave the government, it will go to the management, so, which is uh, market driven. So yes, the companies are there, but I wouldn't be able to tell right now. But as the minister said, um, Let's, 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 let's close this one first and then we'll discuss others. <laughs> because a, there will a, definitely be an impact <laughs> if we announce another one while, this is while the market is still open for this IPO. Right, you know as journalists, we're very greedy. We always want to move on to the next one. Uh, Celestine, uh, before I I'll let you go, uh, cross-listed. Cross-listed companies have uh, usually underperformed on the, the Rwanda Stock Exchange. Uh, what can we do to make sure that uh, there's more robust and more appetite when it comes to cross-listed companies, especially the likes of Uchumi that are not particularly having a presence here? Well, I think you have said it rightly. Um, you know, uh, companies like Uchumi, first of all, they, mark, they must get the house in order. 
So they've had issues in the past, uh, but they, they, they are restructuring and, and uh, the market will be waiting. Even in Nairobi, they are not that active right now, which is where the main listing is. So as for the others, uh, the, the banks we have listed here and the other companies which are listed, they, are, they, they come here um, across listing or dual listing. Most of the time, it's not, actually all the time, it's by introduction. So these companies are there, they are mature, they are already trading where they are trading from the, as a main listing. And they come for different reasons, okay? So now, to get them to trade here, you would need to, uh, of course, you know, to, to do more public awareness. And our technology is allowing that. Uh, we are settling them the same way we settle the local companies. But uh, now we have to move a step further to link the central depositories and then the other larger integration of the, the, the East African uh, uh, markets so that, you know, the, the, whole ma the, 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 the entire market become in sync. However, you know, it, it goes in line with the level of development also of the market. Even the local companies are not traded enough. So we need to, to get uh, enough critical mass of local domestic investors. That is for the same goes for the local institutional investors, same goes for the, the retailers especially. Because, uh, you know, they are the ones who buy and sell most of the time. Uh, you know, they, they are the ones who, who, who are more active, you know, uh, in, in these markets when they develop. So uh, it's, it's, uh, we need to develop the local market, you know, the, the investor base mainly and the public awareness. I mean, with the 15,000 accounts, uh, it's not really, it, it, it's not like you're going to cut the cake. So we need to be doing more alongside public education and marketing and uh, increasing that uh, investor base. Yeah. Right. Uh, finally, Robin, uh, again, going through the prospectus, a number that actually struck me is uh, on, in Musanze. Apparently, uh, m contrary to what uh, uh, Celestine is saying, going digital and investing more on that space, uh, you are looking at an investment in Musanze that is more brick and mortar. Uh, now, would it one argue that uh, this is the time for you to go uh, completely digital as, as opposed to uh, going brick and mortar, uh, which is something that we have seen in the 20th century? Okay, from a from a, a distribution strategy with the, within the bank, we have to follow where the market is, as well. And uh, uh, Rwanda is an extremely safe and secure um, a country uh, where people feel comfortable carrying cash around. There's been a lot of investment for, across the banking sector um, in uh, in uh, um, in digital distribution. Um, we've seen credit card. Um, uh, credit card issuance, plastic issuance has been uh, phenomenal uh, from, a, from a growth point of view uh, ac across the sector. Um, and it's an area where we all, obviously it's a lot, from a delivery perspective, it's a lot cheaper to deliver digitally than it is to deliver through brick and mortar. But we have to serve both parts of the, both part of the markets. We have to, uh, where we are at the moment, we need to be able to uh, assist our customers in terms of um, the being able to take the cash and, uh, and, and deliver at the same time. Um, as far as branch, uh, branch expansion goes, we won't, uh, we've been a bit reticent in terms of expanding, we'll upgrade. Um, we've, uh, we've rolled out a new livery, which you would see in our three, uh, our three new branches, Ramira, Kigali Heights and uh, Sheik Center. We have a new livery that we're rolling out. Um, some an area where we haven't invested in for, for quite some time. So we're looking to the look and feel. We want a, a nice, uh, comfortable environment for our, for our customers to enjoy when they're in the bank. And at the same time, $4 million in a new core banking system will allow us to elevate our, uh, our product offering uh, within the digital space. And that includes agency banking, which we're look to, looking to roll out um, later, in, uh, later in this year. Um, up, uh, upscaling our, uh, our mobile banking platform, uh, our electronic banking platform, where we've led the, led the market. But we have to still serve that, that heavy um, requirement for, uh, for cash within the, within the market. Right. Uh, gentlemen, before I let you go, maybe uh, some final remarks, uh, starting with uh, you, Robert. Well, I think I must say that uh, it's exciting times for, um, for our capital markets and um, especially for, um, for Rwanda, because uh, it's clear that um, we have been uh, struggling as a region, Sub-Saharan Africa, to make our capital markets relevant to our economies because of the size and proportion of the growth that is driven by the capital market. Um, given the global events now, there's a clear message that um, our domestic economies have got to mobilize 
domestic resources to be able to move forward and capital market will be able to deliver that. And uh, with this IPO um, of i and I believe it's very timely. And our message out there is uh, we've already developed extremely efficient methods of processing IPOs uh, in, in, in Rwanda. Right. Uh, Celestine? Well, for me, that's the bottom line. It's a new product. Uh, it, it's going to definitely add activity on the stock exchange. But having said that, I think it's the right time to be coming to the market uh, for a, a new IPO. Uh, the, the environment is ripe. Uh, the soft infrastructure is ready and it's very, very conducive. Uh, hard infrastructure also at the same time we are developing it. Um, so it's, it's that time, you know, we are, this uh, IPO is coming at the time where we are launching our own capital market master plan for the country, which has um, a lot to say on what's going to happen in the next 10 years. So I think what we've been waiting for uh, in the past uh, few years we've been in existence, uh, I think we are ready to, to get to the next level. So a lot more is in store. Uh, it's not only an IPO, we are also looking at different new products which are going to be coming to the market. Diversification will be paramount. You are hearing banks talking about, uh, also thinking about trading in the debt market. We are welcoming all the banks, actually we are discussing with the banks already on how we can uh, put our hands together and the central bank to develop more products uh, and uh, becoming uh, members of our fraternity. Robin? I think over and above the fact that the the, the bank is in really good shape. We've posted uh, impressive sets, uh, a set of results. It's a great time for investing. Um, this is an excellent market that welcomes investors. It's a stable, well-controlled um, market. Uh, our financial services sector is liquid and profitable across the sector. Um, growth has been good, albeit a little bit slow in, the, um, in 2016. We haven't uh, felt the contagion of the, the rest of East Africa. We haven't seen the devaluation. The, the, the drop in, uh, um, uh, in uh, market cap of the financial services sector in Kenya has been um, heavily uh, as a result of um, regulations that have been uh, brought into play in Kenya. We haven't suffered the, the, that fallout uh, within the sector. So I think it's a good time to buy. Rwanda is uh, um, on the rise. And uh, I think with the good governance, a uh, stable st uh, sector, it's an excellent opportunity right now to invest um, in, in the capital markets and i and a great company to be investing in. Okay, gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all the time that uh, we did have. Uh, on my left, of course, uh, Robin Berstow, Managing Director at uh, i and Bank. In the middle, uh, Celestine Robacumba, CEO of uh, the Rando Stock Exchange. And on my far left there, Robert Matthew, Executive Director at uh, the Capital Markets Authority, Rwanda. That's where we'll leave it for this special edition of uh, the debate panel discussion here at the IPO of i and Bank. Interesting times. We're looking at a, a return on equity of 20.1%. Where do you find that? Only here on CNBC Africa First in Business Worldwide.